And Gil Brandt's legacy cannot be underestimated. And one man who knows that all too well is North Texas' own former Cowboy Everson Walls. Longtime fans will remember him. He joins me live now. Thank you, Everson, for joining us. And right off the bat, I want to get your thoughts just on Gil Brandt's legacy. He obviously was very instrumental in your career. No, he really was. And, and, and really a lot of people's careers, whether you were a player or an executive, you know, he was an executive's executive. He knew how to negotiate from their standpoint. Uh, he was one of the toughest negotiators you ever wanted to be around. And not only that, uh, he was able to uh, usher the NFL into the digital age. You know, he was the first uh, guy that started dealing with computers, the first executive that started dealing with computers and using that as a, a way uh, to evaluate players. Uh, he was one of the best scouts out there. Uh, he knew where to find talent. Uh, he knew that you didn't have to be a football player in college to be a good football player in the professional, in the professional league. Uh, he's just one of those guys that were able to find those gems, uh, myself being one of them. Uh, I, I tease him all the time back in the day that he would use us for cheap labor <laughs> by finding those diamonds in the rough. But uh, we all turned out to be uh, very instrumental in the legacy of the Dallas Cowboy organization. Yeah, and you yourself, undrafted, out of Grambling, just is there any memories you have of his style, his scouting style and interactions with him? Well, you know, he walked around like he knew everything, which he did. Uh, he seemed to know everything about every player that he scouted. Uh, I still, to this day, and I said it earlier, I don't know if he really knew I was gonna make the team, uh, because if he did, he probably would've paid me more money. But uh, I did see that uh, he had several players on the roster uh, that had my, tip, my type of background, HBCU players. Uh, that was extremely important to me that I was on a team with a lot of black college players that I idolized. And those guys were instrumental on, the, on this team as well. Tom Landry knew how to use them. Gil Brandt knew how to recruit us. And that's the thing that uh, will stick out in my mind. And that's what I wanted to ask you about next. HBCUs historically did not have NFL scouts coming to their practice field, scouting them. Just how was he met when he showed up, really, to go into an area that was unexplored at first? Well, you know, a lot of uh, the NFL didn't use them. But the AFL at the time, if you recall, they, they had two different leagues. The AFL was mostly full of HBCU players. And once the credibility there was established from their standpoint, then Gil Brand knew it was safe to go around to those campuses. And, uh, you know, of course, he had his chest stuck out at, on any campus that he went on because he represented the Dallas Cowboys. But once again, his way of scouting wasn't just about computers. He also had this feel. And he knew that if an athlete was an athlete, no matter what, what uh, sport he played. And when you talk about guys like myself, uh, who, who was able to do certain things in high school and in college, uh, other than football, then he was really good at putting that guy in the right spot on the Cowboys team and getting the players that Tom Landry needed because HBCU players were extremely instrumental uh, in the Cowboys' early victories in the 70s going to all those Super Bowls. How was he viewed from other players and teams across the league? Obviously, we hear a lot about coaches and GMs building teams. This was a scout whose name was very prominent in the success of the Cowboys. Well, you know, you, you, you got the yin and the yang with these things. Just as good as he was and as much as he was uh, respected for his ability and his eye for talent, uh, he was also an extremely hard-ass negotiator. And uh, so that was always the negative part of it. There are people that, to this day that are still alive, former players, who are still mad at Gil Brandt about the negotiations that went on, myself being one of them. And I can truly say that when he got out of the game, it was a lot easier to get the kind of money you wanted from the Dallas Cowboys or in the NFL. Yeah, and we hear so much about Tom Landry, but... Gil Brandt, uh, Tom Landry, and Tech Schramm. I mean, Gil Brandt's name, do you think, is right there alongside those two as far as what the Cowboys have become today? That's true. That, that is very true. I, I, I would call them a three-headed monster. They all work together very well. Uh, they knew 
uh, how to keep things in check. Uh, they knew how to keep players' salaries down. Uh, they all worked together very well. And they all feigned ignorance very well also <laughs> because each one of them was able to, to put the, the blame on the other person. You go see Tom Landry, he'll say, well, Gil Brandt said, you know, you don't need that much money. And then you go see Gil, he said, well, Tom said that, you know, you won't be playing that much this year. So, no, they played off of each other extremely well uh, to the detriment of the players' uh, salaries. Yeah, some great stories there. Such a legacy he leaves behind. Thank you very much, Everson Walls, for joining us this midday. You're welcome, Chris. Thank you. And you can find so much more on Gil Brandt's legacy and reaction to his death on our website, WFA.com. Just click on the story.